All right, for exercise 11, simple staining. So uh, for this exercise, you are going to be looking at the results photos that are in the simple stains document. Um, there's also a simulator that you can uh, run that you were given that link. Now, these questions are not due week two, they are due, I believe, week three. Um, so the first three questions are asking you to uh, draw and label things, actually the first four. So uh, then we get into the, the actual questions that would come from the material. So um, staining is when you have uh, a microscope slide already prepared, usually a smear like we learned about in exercise 10. And you take a dye of some kind and there's different ones like uh, methylene blue, basic fusion, safranin, crystal violet. Um, and each of these colorful liquids has what is called a chromophore, which is the color bearing group. Uh, and I mean group in the organic chemistry sense of that term. It's a molecule that is colorful and uh, that's why it's called a chromophore. Now these dyes can either be basic or acidic. And again, I mean that in the chemistry sense. Um, if they are basic, they are positively charged. They are cation chromophores. If they're acidic dyes, they're gonna be anionic chromophores, which means they're going to be negatively charged. Now, bacteria themselves are um, negatively charged. So when you have a basic dye and an acidic bacterial cell wall, the stain will go to the cell wall and actually stain your cell. If you have an acidic dye, it'll be repelled by the bacteria because the charges are similar and then it will stain the background instead. So it'll provide a, a, a dark background and then you'll have a clear spot in the middle where your cell was. The purpose of staining is to allow you to see the size, the shape, the arrangement of the different types of bacteria that might be on your slide, because usually they are clear, they're transparent, they wouldn't look very different from the glass of the slide. It would be very difficult to see them without staining. So there are different basic shapes of bacteria. Um, most of the time, you're going to hear about cocci, which are little spheres. They look like circles because everything's flat on a microscope. Or bacilli, sometimes you'll hear them called rods, and they're little rod shaped, like little dashed lines. Um, there are other shapes out there, and I have made a video already about some of the other shapes if you're curious that you can check out. Um, uh, one of the questions is going to ask about where you would find certain types of these bacteria. Um, in exercise 11, it talks about um, cocci, sp spirals, and bacilli and fusiform and comma shaped and nope that's it so the uh, cocci often occur in chains long strands sometimes you'll see them in an arrangement that looks kind of like a cluster, like a cluster of grapes, 
those are considered uh, staphylo cocci. If it's in a long strip, that's a streptococci. Sometimes you'll also see them in pairs. Those would be diplococci, or uh, sometimes you'll have two pairs together in a little tetrad. Um, and then bacilli, generally, they're either going to be single or they'll be in long chains. Um, occasionally, you will see other arrangements, but most commonly, they're going to be either single or in chains. Sometimes you will see something called a cocobacillus shape, and that's a very rounded rod shape. If you look at the cell and it is ever so slightly longer than it is wide, then it is definitely a rod and not a cocci or coccus. Um, the reason that we have to draw the line somewhere, so if it's dimensions of the height and the width are the same, then it's a circle or a, a caucus. If the dimensions of the height and the width are not the same, then it's a bacillus or a rod. Um, they talk about vibrio, which are um, responsible for the disease cholera, among other diseases and different species. Um, and they're the ones that are shaped like a comma. The infusiform ones are, um, they're shaped like a rod, but the ends are pinched. So it's a rod, but it's pointy on each end. And you'll find those in um, dental plaque. They can cause uh, cavities and things like that. Um, there's a term, pleomorphism. That is an irregularity of shape. So that could be something that is club-shaped or needle-shaped or in any way irregular, meaning that each cell is not exactly the same as one another. It's an unusual characteristic for a bacterium to have. So when you see it, it's notable. Um, metachromatic granules, those are masses of something called volution, which is uh, a particular molecule that's present in large concentration. And they do um, soak up the stain and so they can be a highly visible feature of some cells. And uh, palisite arrangement is when you have a bunch of parallel, um, instead of in a line, parallel lined up rod shaped bacteria. So it kind of looks like a picket fence. Um, sometimes it's also called Chinese letter arrangement because it, it sort of resembles or did resemble to the researchers who discovered it. Let me say that. Um, the pen strokes used for writing Chinese letters. Um, we try to use palisite arrangement because honestly, it doesn't really look like writing and that's not very accurate. Um, I think if anybody could read Chinese, they would look at it and they'd say, well, that doesn't look like writing. Um, and that's it for uh, exercise 11.